So our next parameterization of rotations is going to be inspired by the aeronautics community, and that is our roll, pitch, and yaw. Now these are all done according to the world coordinate frames. And so in order to do this with our airplane, we're going to have to remember where the world coordinate frames are. How we do this is we first yaw about the world x-axis. Remember that's straight up here. So we're going to yaw around the x-axis. Then we're going to pitch around the world y-axis. So remember our original y-axis is towards me. So we can do a pitch around that angle here. And then we can roll around the world z-axis. So here my world z-axis was right here. I can roll that around. And so when we write that out as a matrix, you can see that first we do the yaw about the x-axis, and then previous to that is the rotation around the world y-axis, and previously to that is that rotation around the world z-axis. Of course, we can also look at that from the opposite direction, which is says I'm first going to do a roll around my current z-axis, and then I'm going to do a pitch about my current y-axis, and then I'm going to do a yaw about my current x-axis. So those are equivalent. But here are our roll pitch and yaw angles in the book. And so you can see here we've got our nose pointed straight upwards, Z upwards. Actually, I'd have to put it like this to match that book. Something like this. We are doing a yaw about the world X axis. So that's X of phi. We're doing a pitch around the world Y axis. So Y of theta. And then rotate around the world Z axis z comma phi. So now we can write those in in this order. So this first one, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and we've got our cos of phi, our negative sine of phi, our sine of phi, and our cos of phi. Next one is a rotation around the y-axis, so 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And I think it's good practice for you to write these out. And then cosine of theta, sine of theta, our negative sine is down here, and cos of theta. And finally, we have a rotation on our x-axis, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then we've got our cosine of psi, negative sine of psi, sine of psi, cosine of psi. When we multiply this all out, we get this matrix down here. The simplest entry over here is going to be a negative sine of theta. And we're going to do the same sort of thing. You see we've got the cosines over here. In this case, if our 3, 2 and our 3, 3 are not both equal to 0, that means that negative sine of phi is not equal to either plus or minus 1. And so then we can use an arctangent argument to figure out what this value is. Sine of theta is equal to negative r31 and cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the root of 1 minus r31 squared and then we would build up the rest of the angles in exactly the same way. We've got one more way that we're going to use to describe rotations in this class and that is the axis angle and it's a really cool concept and I didn't believe it the first time I heard it. In fact there's probably part of me that still has a difficulty believing it. But what it is, is at any orientation, so imagine that you take your airplane, put it into any orientation, any orientation in the world, what I can do is I can find an axis where if I stuck that axis through your airplane and then rotated it around that axis, I would get into that orientation that you picked. There always exists some axis that you can do a rotation, and that rotation is less than or equal to 180 degrees in magnitude that will bring your airplane exactly to that orientation. And so our question is, how do we pick that axis, and how many degrees should we rotate around that axis to make that composite rotation? So the axis angle representation says we're going to represent a rotation by a rotation about some axis k by theta radians. And so here we've got our picture. This here is k. And we're rotating some theta radians in order to do that. So we're going to build up this answer. First, we're defining this axis as a unit vector. So that is going to be some kx, ky, kz. Quantity transpose, we'll put some commas in there to make it easy to read. 
So this point over here is kx, ky, kz. So we can project it down in the plane. So this value over here, this length of this axis, is going to be kx squared plus ky squared. This length on this side is just going to be kz. And so what we want to do first is rotate the world z axis to align with this vector k. So we're going to rotate the world z axis to align with this vector k. So if we want to take some vector and rotate it, what you first got to do is rotate it some distance alpha. So it's rotated toward the direction you want to tip, and then, then tip it off by some value beta. So two rotations are enough to move you to some axis. We have to figure out what is this alpha and what is this beta. The sine of alpha is going to be opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite is ky. ky over the root of kx squared plus ky squared. And then our cosine is going to be the adjacent, kx over the root of kx squared plus ky squared. And then we're going to do a rotation of beta about the current y-axis. So this beta value is going to be given by our, our opposite value here, which is kx squared plus ky squared over hypotenuse. And our hypotenuse is a unit vector k, so it's just divided by 1. And then our cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. In that case, it's just going to be kz. And so then our total revolution, our r is going to be first an rz alpha, ry beta, and then we're going to apply a rotation of theta about that, and then we'll do our inverse. This is a similarity. So after we do this revolution, we're going to do our revolution, and then we're going to move it back. So you can see we're first going to do the r, then we're going to rotate about our z-axis by theta, and then we're going to undo that initial rotation r. And so we can write this entire rotation out here. First we're going to do rz comma alpha, then we're going to do our r, y, comma, beta. Then we're going to apply our r, z of phi. And then we're going to undo everything. So I'm going to put it in parentheses. r, z, comma, alpha, r, y, comma, beta, and inverse. That's five matrices, if you do it the lazy way. But if you multiply all these out, you get this rather complex looking equation here, which is ugly even though we've simplified it with a little known function. V theta is equal to the ver sine of theta, which is equal to 1 minus the cosine of theta. In order to solve this, we're going to first figure out what the trace is of this matrix, which will give us what theta is, and then we'll work to isolate to figure out what the unit vector k is by isolating some terms. So let's just jump into that. What is a trace of this entry? Well, the trace is equal to just the diagonal entries. So that's r11 plus r22 plus r33, which in this case is equal to kx squared verse theta plus cosine theta plus ky squared verse theta plus cosine theta plus kz squared verse theta plus cosine theta. We'll collect all the terms that are the same together. So we've got plus 3 cosine theta, and then we've got all of our verse terms. So our verse terms are going to equal to kx squared plus ky squared plus kz squared that quantity all times the verse theta. Well, this quantity over here, since it's a unit vector, is going to be 1. So we just get 1 minus cosine theta plus 3 cosine theta. I can simplify that as 1 plus 2 cosine theta. So then what theta is, is just inverting these. So we've got this quantity over here. We're going to have r11 plus r22 plus r 3, 3. That quantity 
we'll subtract 1 out over it, then we're going to divide it by 2, and then we'll take our cosine inverse of that, and that'll give us our answer there. Next, we want to think, how could we isolate this kx a sine of theta? Well, we need to look for some terms that have it. I've got it right here and here, and notice that this has exactly the same terms. So if we took r3, 2 minus r2, 3, what we would get is kx times 2 sine of theta. And we can do a similar thing to find all the other ones. You notice that this term over here, we've this top one, uh, so r13 and r31, both have the ky sine of theta. And so thus we can solve that k is equal to 1 divided by 2 sine of theta times these differences. So r32 minus r23, r13 minus r31, and then finally r21 minus r12. So those quantities grab us k. Let's do an example problem. And so here we've been given a k vector that this is on. Let's draw what that looks like. So here's my coordinate frame. I've got my x, y, and z. And then I am one unit in each axis. 1, 1, 1. And so my vector that I'm rotating everything around is going to be this axis here. This is my k. And then I want to rotate about this axis by 90 degrees. And so I've copied over what is the definition of the axis angle notation. And just remember that this v stands for 1 minus the cosine of theta. Now if we're at cosine of 90 degrees, that means that the cos of 90 degrees is equal to 0. That's going to simplify a lot of things in this expression. I can cross those out. That means that the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So this will be a 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then the verse sine is going to also be 1. So this will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then our remaining terms are just going to be 1 over the root of 3. And so this first term, if we have 1 over root 3, and we're going to square that, then that's just going to be 1 third. And so our diagonal is going to have squared terms, so 1 third along the diagonal. And then over here, this is 1 third, because kx is 1 over root 3 times 1 over root 3 minus 1 over root 3. And so this term is going to be 1 third minus 1 over root 3. This term likewise is going to be 1 third, but it'll be plus root 3. 1 third plus 1 over root 3. Going on to this next term here, it'll be a plus of these terms. So 1 third plus 1 over root 3. And then this term will be 1 third minus 1 over root 3. And over here we've got 1 third minus 1 over root 3. Next term is a plus root t, 1 over third plus 1 over root 3. And there's our first example of doing axis angle notation. And we get this rotation matrix. And then we could decode it in the similar way by taking the trace and then looking at the differences between these uh, pairwise terms. Now let's talk about what a rigid motion is. Our robots, we're going to assume, have no flexibility. So every motion that they do is a rigid motion. Somebody says, I've got a rigid motion. What they're really saying is there's this ordered pair where we've got a D value and an R value. Now this D value is an R3. So it's uh, three scalar numbers. And this R is in special orthogonal of order three. So what this is, it's a pure translation. And then it's followed by a pure rotation about the new origin. The group of all rigid motions has a name. It's known as the Special Euclidean Group. 
and it has a notation. We notate it as SE3. You note that both the S and the E are capitalized, just like we had SO3, which is special orthogonal. And these equal a rotation matrix. SE3 is an element that is in the space R3 cross SO3. And so here is an example problem that will help us to draw this out and consider what it means. We have a rotation matrix R1 in frame 0. That's the orientation of frame 1 with respect to frame 0. R2 in frame 0 is the orientation of frame 2 with respect to frame 0. Then we're saying we have a vector d1 as a vector from frame 0 to 1, and d2 as a vector from frame 1 to 2. And then finally, we're given some point p that is rigidly attached to frame 2, and it has local coordinates p in frame 2. And so what they want us to do is figure out what all these are. The first step, though, I think, is always to try to draw this out. So let's draw out the origin first. And it doesn't matter what orientation we put all these at. We're just getting a schematic. So instead of actually labeling which these are, I'm just going to say this is O0, X0, Y0, Z0. Because it doesn't matter which one is X, Y, and Z right now. We're just thinking about the concept. And then we have a vector that goes to the next frame. Let's draw that next frame in red. So here is our next frame. We just need three right-hand rule coordinate frames. We need three right-hand rule basis vectors, O1, X1, Y1, Z1. And then there's a vector that tells us what the position is. It's a vector from here to here. This vector here is D1. And we can talk about D1 in a different coordinate frame. We could say this is D1 in frame 0, and we'd be referring to it in this co in 0's coordinate frames. Or we could do it in any other frame. Next, we've got a coordinate frame 2, which I'll just draw here. It is O2, X2, Y2, Z2. And similarly, there is a vector that shows this displacement. This vector that we have is called D2 because it's from frame 1 to 2. Then finally, we're going to need a point P. This is what we actually care about. So I'm going to put this point P here. P over here is a point. It just exists. But we need a coordinate frame so we can talk about where to find that. Then I need a vector that goes from frame 2 to my point. And this vector is P in frame 2 because it's in the local coordinates of P in frame 2. So now what we want to talk about is how can we use these drawings to then talk about where things are. So where is P in frame 1? So I want to go from frame 1 and talk about where P is. Well, I have P in frame 2. And so I could get it in the coordinate frame of 1 by simply rotating it. So if I rotate 2 to 1, this vector that we have is now given in terms of the orientation of frame 1. But I'm missing this displacement, D2. So I've also got to add in plus D2 in frame 1. So this, I get this vector. So I start from here, I march all the way out to this point, and then I take P and I rotate it so that's it's now in terms of frame 1. Similarly, we can talk about P0. Well, what that is, is just P1. If I had P in frame 1, then I could just rotate it from frame 1 into frame 0. Well, let's actually, let's, let's draw in what P1 is. I think that might be handy. Yeah, let me pick a color I haven't done before. So now this, right here, this is P1. But what we want to know is what is P0. P0 is this quantity all the way from here to here. We want to know what is P0. So P0 is going to, we're going to take P1, we're going to rotate in frame 1, we've got to add our offset in, plus D1 in frame 0. And that's this distance here. Now insert this entire quantity. We can insert in to P1. And so we could rewrite P0 as I'm going to take the rotation into frame 0 of this entire quantity, which was 2 and 1, 
P in 2 plus D2 in 1, and then I need to do my offset of D10. So now we'd like to simplify what this P0 is. We need to take this vector P2 that we have, and we need to rotate that from frame 2 into frame 0. And then we need to know where is the origin of frame 2. So what is the origin of frame 2? But we want that in frame 0. And so now we can solve for these terms. This R20 is equal to this product that we're multiplying out here. I'll go ahead and multiply it out so we can see that. So we've got R10, R21, P2, plus R10, D2 and 1, plus D1 in frame 0. So this term that we have over here, this is O2 in frame 0. So I can use the original colors. We had our D2 value in frame 1, which we then rotate um, into frame 0. And we also have this offset D1 in frame 0. That's a wrap.